And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at one of my most top 10 most anticipated games of 2022, Titan. It's kind of a weird name since it already has a very famous game called Titan, but this one looks different. It's about the moon uh, that is orbiting Saturn called Titan. And in this game, you are going to be mining it. And I was excited because this game came with a big round board, which I thought rotated. It doesn't rotate. Now, it's much bigger than I had anticipated. This is one of six sections of the board. This game, when the box came, I wasn't expecting it to be this big. This game is huge. A gigantic game. It is a Euro style game ish in which you are placing pipes and getting resources to manipulate and just mine Titan. Try to get the good stuff and not get the bad stuff and deliver orders to other planets. Here's a little bit about how it plays. Okay, so here is the board, which is randomly put together at the beginning of the game, and there's some other randomness that happens. You put some tokens out on the board in the top level, and one token on the bottom level, and then here at the bottom, there's different elements in this game, and I'm going to get them wrong all the time. There's titanium, hydrocarbon, water, silicium, and tholins, but I'm going to call them red, orange, blue, black, cream, um... And then there's white, which is another one. I forget all the different types. But anyway, these are going to be placed out. And there's a beginning phase called the landing phase where you're going to put out your starting station, which is your color and also has a letter. And you'll put your little drones here next to it. You have four drones numbered one through four. Each player also has this board here. So this is my company. This shows my... Leader, I don't have a special ability, but there are ones with special abilities. You have a spot here where you'll be able to put pipes, but as the game goes by, you have at the beginning of the game, you have room to put cubes, but as you put pipes in the board, you also have space to put cubes on there too. And so this is going to be um, basically your hold. As you drop more pipes, you have more room to put stuff out on the board. So you're going to put one of these out. And you'll be connected here to um, a station that's already on the board. These different stations that are out there, these different processing plants, mills, refineries, complexes, and centers, etc. And then the actual game is going to begin. Realize that I'm not going to be showing you everything about this game, just some parts of it here. But each round of the game, players are going to take turns taking one of these. And these are going to be numbered from 0 to 5, and there's five different colors. You can only take, if I take the black one, these are going to actually be stacked. I don't have them stacked because they terribly stack. But you're going to take it, you will score that many points. And then you're going to put cubes on it. Red cubes are bad, the clear cubes are good. So the zero one gives you zero points, but also has none of the red cubes on it. Once you take it, you're going to place it somewhere on the board in a, one of these station spots. And when you place it there, if there are some tokens there, you're going to get those cubes of matching colors. So that one, for example, gives me one water and one orange cube. So I'll take those two cubes. And I'm going to put those cubes on my drop ship. So your drop ship has four sections. So any section that I don't get any bonuses for, I'm going to fill with pipes. So these are the four actions that I'm going to have on my turn. So if you go to a spot on the board that has no bonus cubes, you'll have four pipes. Then players will take turns in turn order, and one of the turn things you can do is I can take a cube. I'm just going to take that cube and put it here in my section. I've acquired that cube, and I can use it in the future. Or I can lay pipe. So when I lay pipe, the direction of the pipe, they have arrows on them, will always go away from my factory. I can place pipe as long as it's connected to my network. You can place pipe even up and down on these different areas. If you place your pipe on top of things that show cubes, you'll get those. Whenever you go down, you get red cubes. And, you're, and once you go down to the middle here, you can then come up another side of the middle into other spots. And you can flow all around. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to connect to these different refineries. Whenever you connect to a refinery, you get a cube not only for that refinery, but for every refinery that you're also connected to of that color. So this would give me an orange cube, but let's pretend that this one down here was also orange and I'm connected to that. I would get two orange cubes when I connect to this one. After you're done doing that, 
you have an optional action where you can activate your drone. Each drone is numbered from one to four, so you'll activate whatever turn it is, one, two, three, or four. Drones can move around your network and they can pick up cubes. So sometimes you'll pick up these clear cubes and you'll bring them back up to you, but sometimes you pick up red cubes because you don't want them being sucked by, by your network or you'll go drop them down into the middle. And so there's different, you know, you're gonna be moving cubes around. You can also use drones to do other actions. They can dock with the different resources, and when you're docked in an area, it makes it easier to upgrade that area. You can upgrade these different spots. When you upgrade one of these refineries, you pick a color and put it on it, which is going to give you two more points. You'll put one of your tokens in to show that you control that spot now. And once it's upgraded, it has to be hooked up to your network, and you have to spend the orange cubes to upgrade, but that's called a module. So now when that particular one is activated by any player, including yourself, you'll get the color on the top. So now this is a red color, and since red is bad, red you don't get as a resource when you activate these. You actually get rid of them because getting red into your board clogs up spots and is worth negative points at the end of the game. There's a few other things you can do. You can blow up pipes on the board of yours or another player. You blow up another player's to be messy to them. You blow up yours so that you can place them again to get points. You can take extra actions with your drones or even move your drones outside your network. But the reason you're doing all this stuff is to fulfill planetary orders. So you can see at the end of my turn, if I have a blue and a white cube, I can get rid of them to take this planet, which will be worth two points at the end of the game. And these planets here are continually being replaced by various planets that players will be able to, you know, send orders to. There's also going to be some boards out here. Some of them change from game to game. Some are in the same in every game. So here, if I get one of these from each of the different uh, refineries, I can put my token there and get 10 points. Here I need five black cubes and five white cubes. So the first person to do each one gets 10 points, 6 points, and 3 points. Or the first person to make a delivery of that many cubes gets Mars, which is worth 10 points. This is the main way to get points over the course of a game. You'll go through five cycles. Each cycle is going to have four turns. And after you go through all that, after each cycle, you'll be, if you have cubes sucked into the middle, you'll be sucking this up. Although if there's red cubes, you're also sucking them out of your buildings. You don't want to get the red cubes. At the end of the game, each of these that you have on your board is worth two points, while red cubes are worth minus one points. And then whoever has the most of the different color cubes will get some extra points. Or we're called, in this game, points are called credits. There might be a few other things, especially if you have some sort of special ability, like this person here. There might be a few other end game scoring points, and whoever has the most is the winner. I like to point out that I really like this board here and the dropship board because I like the fact that the cubes can go there or the pipes can go there. I also like that these pipes don't roll very easily because of the arrows on them. I want to be clear that every other facet of production of this game I hate from the bottom of my heart. There's so much here to dislike and I am mind boggled that so much of this went through testing purposes. For example, these are supposed to be stacked at the beginning of the game and you stack them up like this and flip over the top one. It's terrible. They, these aren't meant to be stacked. Why are these 3D? Also, at the beginning of the game, you have to press all the cardboard into these. It's very difficult if you're not careful or if you put the wrong color in the wrong one. First of all, you're going to have a hard time getting it out. Secondly, the cardboard barely fits in and it, so it's easy to fray. And that goes with the cardboard in this big section here. We'll come back to this because this is the most hated part of the thing. You have these little boxes to put resources. By the way, these are white. No, they're not. These are orange. Barely. It's really hard to tell these apart. But fortunately, they gave you these boxes that are definitely not going to fall apart. Oh, my word. Okay, but let's get to the, the, uh, the biggest egregious factor here. Uh, this board is fine, but it's way too big for what's needed. But this board itself. Okay, so this is a gigantic, gaudy, Fisher-Price looking toy that has these tiles that come out of them. So you cannot fit this in the box. 
you can barely fit it on the table. And by the way, it's pretty high on the table. So if you are a shorter person when you sit, you are going to have to actively kind of peer over the edge to see into this. So these slide out. And by the way, I am not having a good time pulling these out. And I'm just showing you this because you have to do this every time you set up and tear down this game. So you're going to pull out these side pieces here, <clears throat> which by the way, again, I don't understand though. These just look so like kids toys. Ah. Okay. Now the main board, this is connected in these six segments, which on the bottom here, there is connections here. You have to pop them out. That's all right. Now, I got that out without too much trouble. Do you want to know why I got it out with too much trouble? Because I took an X Acto knife and filed down on all the different sides of these, which took a long time to do. Because if you do not do that, you may not get them apart. Also good news, if you're playing with less than four players, you don't use the whole board, but you do have to use the whole board. Like if you're playing with two players, I feel like you could just set up half the board, but you don't, you set it up and use it. So, oh, such a pain. I have to take all this apart and put in the box and I hate every moment of it. Components for this game, horrible. Folks, I don't know that I played a game in such a while whose final score for the game is modified so much with how terrible the components are. And the problem is these components are supposed to be grandiose and big. Now I, I think in the industry, in the gaming industry, our games are starting to get a little too big. When I say a little too big, I mean they're getting gigantic. But most of the time when these big gigantic productions are done from Foundations of Rome or you know one of the big uh, Kickstarter games, they look great, they're amazing. This one does not particularly look great. It looks okay, but it's not amazing. It barely fits in the box. The fact that I had to use an X-Acto knife to whittle this down, that's, 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 uh, how? Then there's four different cubes in this game that do various things. One lets you move the drones more, uh, one lets you uh, upgrade, put those little caps on the things. What, how do you know which one does which? There's no player aid. Are you kidding me? In a game this big that's taking up all this space, there's no player aid? And then the fact that you set this huge board up, you set everything up, and then they're like, oh, you're playing three players? We're cordoning off part of the board. You're not even using that section. Then why did I bother setting it up? This game takes so long to set up and so long to tear down, but doesn't have the joy that some games bring that to. You know, you're like, oh, well, this game, and then this cheap orange looking plastic. This production is trash. I hate it. Okay, so let's talk about the game. The game's fine. It's an interesting game that you really have to maneuver things. Like one of the players I played with, it took a while to figure out, oh, well, these red cubes are bad and they come and they fill your board up and you have to find a way to get rid of them. And it's not easy to get rid of red cubes. And then pretty soon everyone's rushing to get rid of the red cubes. You want the orange cubes because that can upgrade. You want a bunch of connections to the same thing. You're also trying to meet those goals. That's kind of neat. I just, the whole 3D board thing bothers me because the whole board, it could have been done better. And oh, let me go back to components again. The pipes are hard to read what direction they're going in. The drones are almost impossible to see the one, two, three, fours on them. Ugh. But anyway, back to gameplay. It's an interesting back and forth dynamic because you have these pipe networks going around. Now there is one pretty big flaw in the game that I, I maybe I'm wrong on this one. It's not balanced for less than four. For four, you use the whole board, but for three, you cut it off. So if you get a middle spot in the beginning or a good spot first, it's hard to come back. If you get stuck at the edge, it's hard to come back from that. It's hard to, to build your pipes because you can't go into that one section. If you're in the middle, you can spread your pipes farther. I found that to be a problem. Um, but it's kind of interesting putting out a pipe network. I have three oranges. I connect, I get three orange cubes. That's cool. I'm going to upgrade to put a red here. So now when this activates, I get an orange cube and I get to pull one of the red cubes off. So there's a little bit of that. The special abilities are fine. They usually like, hey, for every blue cube, you get a point. The orders, there's so many tiles and you use so few of them over the course of a the game. They're also fine, although you definitely, 
the game doesn't tell you to, but sometimes you get two that are really similar. So then that kind of makes the game weird because everyone's going for the same things and you can't all get it. But the game is fine. It's a fine game that I would have probably given a higher rating to, but I'm so frustrated by the components. And this isn't one of those times, and I, 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 I stand up against those people who go, you need to get over the components and just look at the gameplay. No! No! I don't need to do anything. I want to buy a game that comes out of the box, is playable. We can talk about overproduction or underproduction. I mean, there are games I think that look that don't look great, and I wish they were nicer. And we can talk about games that overproduce, you're like, well, they put too much money into that. But at least most overproduced games are functional. This is neither functional nor really good looking. It's just big to be big. No, I don't want to be big to be. Anyway, I don't like this. I cannot recommend this to anybody. I don't know how I'm going to even get a, you know, like if someone wants to get this copy, they're like, oh, should I get Titan? I'll be like, I don't know. I know some people enjoy the game, and the game is interesting, even though it does have a kind of a weird take that mechanism where you blow someone else's pipes up. That's kind of weird in a big Euro style game like that, but this game is very mean. You're picking up stuff with drones, you throw red cubes in the middle just so someone else sucks them up before you do. Um, you deliver an order before somebody else. So there's definitely, this game is not a solitaire game at all. That's all there. But I, it's, I cannot divorce my thinking about the game from the components. This is one of the worst. Um, mishmashes of that that I've seen in a while. So, ah, it was on my top 10 anticipated games. Now it's currently on my, it's my number one disappointment of the year by a mile. Alrighty. Well, maybe some people love it. So check out other people's reviews because there, some people are going to like it, but I, I, I cannot, cannot, cannot. Titan. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment. How to ruin a game by bad production.